uh, it, was, it is with my great pleasure that I'm introducing Israel. Today is going to present a session about dealing with order in streaming pipelines in Beam. So, quick round of applause. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Israel, so I, I work in Google Cloud as a data engineer, and I normally work with uh, streaming uh, pipelines with uh, customers, uh, customers of Google Cloud. Today I'm going to be talking about how to gain order in your streams to be able to do order processing. Okay, so this is something that normally is thought to be impossible or very difficult, and it's maybe difficult, but it's, uh, but it's also possible. And not so much interested in in uh, ordering, uh, what I'm interested is in being able to uh, do joins in a streaming with uh, session windows or with strings in general. In Apache Beam, you may join uh, strings uh, together um, if you are using what is called a non-merging window. Okay, so for instance, a fixed windows or a, sli a sliding windows. If you are, for instance, using session windows, or if you are not using Windows at all, so you cannot join a strings, okay? And, and this is kind of a, it, it's kind of a pain. In other systems, like for instance Apache Flink, this is possible. So joining with a session Windows is perfectly possible. And you can do like the joins that are, like the one that is shown here, it's called interval, uh, interval joins, okay? So basically you join the data when they overlap, okay? So um, yeah, and just one comment. So I don't have the slides here, so if then see myself like down here, so if, a little bit lost with that, without the slides. Okay, so so basically this is what I want to be able to do, like interval joins, okay? And we have actually talked later about this, about how to enrich one string with another, how to join the two strings, okay? And it's possible, but it's kind of uh, painful, okay? So the, the, the fact that we have to give a talk about that, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evidence of that, okay? So, so why is this actually difficult? So why this is not possible in Apache Beam yet? Or it's possible in Apache Beam, let's say, twisting uh, things around a little bit? Well, um, this is a string. So what, what is a data string? So what is the difference between a streaming and batch, okay? S sorting, ordering in, in batch, it's, I would, I'm not going to say straightforward, but possible. It's, it's a very well-known problem. We have even benchmarks for big data frameworks that um, uh, are based on, on sorting large amounts of data, okay? But in streaming, this is different because we cannot know the boundaries of our data. Like, for instance, here in the picture. So here we have data coming in at different times. Different colors are different keys for the data, okay? And having a key value uh, string, it's going to be... Um, essential for the rest of this talk, okay? Because we don't want to sort the string uh, entirely. That would be kind of impossible, so we don't know the limits of the string, so we have to put the boundaries. But if we put keys, okay, so we can we can have some boundaries already, okay? Um, strings are coming without limits, without clear boundaries, but also they're coming out of order, okay? So this is uh, one of the main features of a streaming as well, so we cannot guarantee the order, and this is, let's say, inherent to how streaming works, okay? So we may have even some, some message queues like promise. We are gonna deliver the messages in the same order in which uh, we receive the messages, okay? But then how the message gets from the message queue to your pipeline, uh, or how the message gets from the real world to the message queue, well, so it's impossible to guarantee order there. So even if, if that's fulfilled, so you're gonna see data out of order, okay? So it's impossible to guarantee order, but we can recover order somehow, okay? So we can maintain order, okay? So let's maintain order and keep going, okay? So assumptions to maintain order. We're gonna have keys, okay? A string with key values, okay? So if this is Java, so this will be key, key this, like it's one of the class of Apache Bean. If this were Python, this could be like a tuple with two elements, okay? So uh, each one of the languages where you can write uh, Apache Beans uh, pipelines in uh, have uh, different assumptions about how a key value class looks like, okay? But whatever it's supported in your language, this is what we have. The examples here are gonna be in Java, all the examples here. The size of the group has to be small enough to fit in memory. So we're gonna be sorting in memory. Um, we're gonna be sorting per key. Uh, um, we're gonna be also sorting uh, per timestamp. And this is actually not a strict requirement. So we may afford doing sorting even if the group doesn't fit in memory. But if we do that, 
this is going to be slow because we're going to ha have to be spilling to disk. And I'm going to show how this is done also. It's, it's not very complex. There are transformations in Apache being uh, ready for, for these things, okay? But I wouldn't recommend doing this because it's going to be super slow. We're going to be sorting by time stamp, okay? Because, well, this is a stream. Uh, normally, we, I'm assuming that we trust the time stamp of our messages and that's the order we want to recover. Again, this is not a strict requirement. So we could sort by anything that is already in the data, any criteria that we want to use. So we are getting messages. Messages come with a time stamp. So it's handy to use that for sorting. But anything that is inside the data, so we can also use for, sort for sorting if, if we want. And well, and the last assumption that is this is a streaming, okay? So because sorting is hard in a streaming, uh, sorting in batch, again, as I said, it's kind of solved. Um, all the examples here are going to be uh, uh, written in Java, and some of the features that we're going to be talking about are not available yet, I would say, in every runner. And so we're going we're gonna to be discussing here Dataflow, Flink, and Spark uh, uh, mainly, okay? But uh, every runner will have their own, their own features. So um, we're going to be using three different approaches in the rest of this presentation. The first one is using windowing. We are going to be also using state and timers. And we are going to be using runner-specific uh, annotations for a DFN that will sort things magically for us. The data we're going to be using is this one here. Um, so we have a, this is in the proto buffer. It could be any kind of data, data class. Uh, this is a proto buffer because uh, the example that I'm going to be sharing at the end of the presentation it's a, it, it's exactly this one, but it could be any data class. So we have a message key or a field that we're going to be used as a key. We have some value, an integer here. It doesn't matter. We're not going to use it. We could sort data by this value if we want, but we are not going to use it here. We have a time stamp. That's part of uh, this is part of the data, but we will also use the so-called timestamp values inside the pipeline. So uh, uh, more on this later. And then we we added some boolean uh, is last message because the way we are going to be generating data, it's randomly, but it's going to be generated in order. And then we will shuffle it. Um, uh, then we will order it again. So and this was handy for debugging to make sure that things were in order. Okay. Um, so, and here uh, at the bottom, you have the link uh, to the repo. Um, uh, we will be sharing the slides, and, and the repo is already up and running in in the in in GitHub. So, how do we generate the data? So, that's the class uh, to generate the data. Well, this is the code. It's a little bit complex. We are generating timestamp values. So, uh, that's include he include here. So, we are generating a list of values that have timestamp. Um, in Apache Bean, you may attach, you should attach time stamps when you're doing a streaming to your data. That this doesn't change the type of your data. Of, of all, it doesn't change the type of your P collection, but in reality, that is, this is an, uh, an additional type. It's called this time stamp value that adds uh, the time stamp as metadata, so to speak. So uh, here it's, a, a, for instance, where we detect if this is the last message. If you notice, we are uh, uh, we are generating all the all the data in a for loop in totally in order, okay? And then we're uh, emitting it here at the output uh, in order as well, okay? But this is not the order in which we're going to process data. This is uh, just um, uh, data generation. The repo that I'll be sharing at the end, it has some unit tests uh, using this data. So this is how the test is generated for the data. It's kind of random. Every time you run the... The test is going to be different data with different time stamps, but um, uh, but they are going to be always generated in this order and later on shuffle and then reorder with with the tests. And this is the link to to the place of the code where this uh, this bit of code is. So how do we shuffle the data before it gets into uh, the streaming pipeline in in testing mode? Well, this is the way we do it. It's just a list and we just do a shuffling of the collection. Okay. So far, so good. This is let, like the pre-requirements for the test. No Apache being code there yet, okay? Except for the timestamp uh, things, okay? So this is how it's generated, easy. So we, this, we I ran it four times, just let's say to shuffle it uh, a little bit more. So it's quite disordered, so to speak, in, in order for, for, for the sorting to, to, be, for, to be more difficult. So let's start talking about Apache Bean. These are the three approaches that uh, I mentioned. Let's start with the windowing one, okay? So 
This is, I would say, the easy one. And this is probably the most straightforward, uh, straightforward one. So you just apply a window and you can try to uh, sort inside the window. Uh, let, let's um, explain a little bit the, the example here. So here we have two windows. Like, um, well, in this graph, it's actually two different uh, time windows, uh, fixed windows uh, with uh, numbers that are coming out of order with different time stamps and so on. We are going to leverage the property that when we have key values, Apache Beam will create windows for each one of the keys automatically. Okay, so like batching or uh, putting things in buckets per key, this is automatically done by the pipeline, and this is going to be really useful. So then later on, what we have to do is just sorting the data in, in inside each one of the groups, like for instance here. Okay, easy. We group by key, we go the, to the iterable of elements, and we sort. Straightforward. So here uh, we have the example applying a window and doing a group by key and sorting. So we see here uh, first like the window, in this case a session window, any window will work. Okay. So we cannot join a strings with uh, a windows that are merging windows, like session windows, okay? But for this approach, we could use any window. We just need a way to, s to group things together uh, to, to apply the sorting. And, and here, this is the most straightforward example. You're gonna be a little bit disappointed in the next slides because it's just taking the list and sorting. Okay. So we group by key and then we sort. This is, this is tricky, the group by key here, because if the group is too, too, too big, if, it, uh, if it's uh, larger than available memory, we have to be careful here on about how we sort because we may exhaust the memory unless we do it, let's say, carefully. Okay? If we instantiate all the data at once in, in this DoFN, so we may be exhausting memory. And that's actually what I'm doing, okay? I'm lazy, right? So it's, uh, this is uh, easy. Uh, I, I normally tell the customers all the time, like, don't do this, don't be lazy. But well, so I was in a rush for this presentation. I, that's, uh, this is what I did, okay? So I'm just uh, here sorting C and adding all the elements to, the, to a list. The, what we get as an input is an iterable. That's not inst instantiated in memory. So the moment we pull one, one element is the moment this, this element is loaded into memory. And here I'm loading everything, okay? Just because I'm, 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 I'm lazy, but if you are not as lazy as me, so you could be using here these sort values uh, extensions of Apache Bean, and this will take care of not exhausting the memory for you. But what it does is the same thing here, okay? So it's a, let's say behind the scenes, it's doing this. And I just wanted to keep the example simple, but behind the scenes, it's just doing this, all right? So this is sorting data, first approach, easy. So that's the approach we probably, you have probably used already um, with its pros and cons. Um, but I was wondering, is this the best way we can do? Or is this the only way we can do, we can do, we can do sor sorting? And what if we don't want to apply a window because uh, the kind of processing that we are doing, we don't have to, or we wouldn't like to apply a window, okay? So like for instance, for sorting strings, I would just want to, to sort things by, um, sorry, for joining strings, not for so sorting, for joining strings, I would like to join strings when they overlap, for the definition of overlapping. That could be a window, but not necessarily. So let's look at the different way of doing this with state and timers. Let's, let's review state and timers uh, a little bit. Um, a commercial uh, here, like a plugin. We have a workshop tomorrow about uh, state and timers. Uh, uh, gentle introduction to state and timers is in Python, if, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about this. Uh, this is um, here the example uh, of, uh, of, the, of the code, or like a diagram showing the example of the code. So we have several state variables here. So we have the, the key that we are processing. We have an order list state. Here is the magic. Uh, we will see more on this later. We have the MAC timestamp scene and then a flag uh, to see if we are waiting for late data. And basically what we do is every time we get messages, we put them in the state and then at some point we emit the output and it's magically sorted because the state is doing that for us. So we'll let, let's see this in the code in, in more detail. So here again, we are leveraging the property of Apache Bean for key the, uh, uh, strings, for key value strings. Every key will have different state variables, okay? So if the key is small enough, um, this, this is gonna work uh, well with high performance and it's gonna parallelize, it's gonna scale up for an infinite amount of keys, let's say virtually, no? So uh, that, that's a limit, but it, it can scale up uh, uh, very much. 
if the groups are very large, each one of, like we have a hot key, well, the scalability will not be as good. One of the good things about this in states is also that we are not loading in memory everything at once, okay? So we don't have, a, we don't have to worry about sorting groups that are larger than the available memory. Again, that's gonna be slow because it's gonna be spilling things to disk or to some state storage, okay? But, uh, but it's gonna be possible, okay? Well, and well, dealing with hotkeys, if the kid's hot, well, lack of performance is the least of the problems, okay? So the, the worst problem could be that it just fails. So let, let's have a look at this. I'm not, I'm not including here the full example because it's a little bit complex, but here are all the state variables. So we, we get the elements with the key values, the time stamp that we're gonna use for the timers, the key that's gonna be useful for when we emit the state, and the, uh, this uh, flag for waiting for late data, um, and or for data that comes out of order, so because the last message we're gonna see it before other messages because they are an order. And here is the magic, again, this ordered list state, okay? So you put th something here and it's gonna be automatically sorted by time stamp. You don't have to do anything, okay? And other state variables. And this is how uh, the, the process method of the DFN looks like, okay? So <clears throat> we see the second line, we just add an element. We don't sort, and this is automatically sorted. And this is automatically an a smart uh, sorted, uh, sorted in a smart way. So it's not being sorted at this moment, okay? It's not being sorted at every insertion, okay? It's being sorted when you need it to, to when you need to pull the data and you need it sorted. Um, so this is the rest of the DFN. So basically that's where we sort automatically by time stamp. And if we find the end of the session, okay, we wait a little bit. So uh, data is unsorted. So here we are using state and timers because we don't want to use windows. We want to use any kind of criteria to close the window of our data. For instance, when we see that uh, this property is true, this is when we want to close the window. So we apply a predicate to our data and that predicate is gonna tell us you are done uh, aggregating your data in a window between quotes, okay? This is a pattern that lots of customers ask uh, for. But data is coming in order, you have to wait. You need a timer here, you need to have some flag, okay? And you need to wait and you need to set up a timer and you need to wait because your data is gonna come out of order. And if you close, when you see something that fulfills a predicate, you're gonna be dropping data, okay? So that's why I call it late data, okay? That is no magic, okay? So in a streaming, even if you don't want to deal with time, you have to deal with time, okay? This is also an idea that uh, sometimes not everyone accepts, but even if you're using a state and timers to group things together without having to use windows, well, you need to deal with timers. Uh, and how do we emit a state? Like here, like this, okay? So. Here, and, and again, I'm loading everything into memory. So lazy, please don't tell anyone. So it's just, uh, just so, but here, see, the ordered list state is just read. There's no sorting, okay? So check the code, no sorting like, at all, okay? So because at this moment when we're reading this, it's the moment that everything is being sorted. And then we emit the output. The downside of this is that not all runners support ordered list state. And if you want, you could try to emulate it with map, map state, okay? Or using value state with a list. Okay, so, and here are the, the examples. And then the DFN annotations are gonna be very quick because I'm already out of time, okay? So the DFN annotations, let me just tell you that there is a magic annotation here that it says requires time sorted input. Again, not all runners support this, okay? So which runners support what? So here it is, okay? Windows are supported everywhere, so this is part of the Apache Beam model. Sorted list state is available in Dataflow, it's available in Flink. Map state is available in Flink, in Dataflow as well. And required time sorted input is not available in Dataflow, it's available in Flink. And which one is best? What do you think? I, I, I was thinking of making a poll, okay, but uh, I'm out of time, so let me discover the secrets here. So Windows and sorted list state are probably the most efficient way that you have in order to sort uh, data by time stamps in a streaming. Uh, this is totally based 
in the direct runner, in made up examples, the samples that I showed, okay? So the results may be different, uh, may be different in different runners, but I guess it's, they are probably uh, representative of what is gonna happen in real life, okay? Or in a real setting with a real runner, not with a direct, a direct runner. Okay, so windows and sorted list state are probably the, the quickest, and the annotation required time sorted input is, is not so fast for, for whatever reason, okay? If you want to know more about this problem, the problem of joining a string, so we have another talk here today with Toby in, in about half an hour. And tomorrow we have the state and timers uh, workshop in case, uh, well, you want to know a little bit more about how to write uh, your own state and timers uh, functions. And that's it. Thanks all for your attention. It's time for questions now.